Is this gonna stay? Okay, I think so. Let me get your guys' comments up. Hello. Can you guys hear me? The background is not look good. I can't even like connect. Can you guys see me? I don't know why I can't connect right now. Okay. There we go. It's working now. Hello. Should I fix this? Let me fix this really quick. It's gonna bother me. <gasps> Everything just fell apart. Hold, please. Oh my goodness. So my stand broke like a week ago. I've been using the same stand for like three years and it just broke. So I've been having some difficulties with uploading. Maybe I just won't use the stand. Hang on. Sorry, I had it all set up and ready to go and then just fell apart. Sorry guys, give me one moment. <sighs> We're just gonna spend half the live with me trying to fix my stupid camera. Okay. Hello. Hi Tara, thank you. Okay, I think we're stable enough. Nope, you are not late, you are on time. You guys hear that train? Hi, Bethany, Arkansas. You knock your camera over all the time too? Okay, good, because then I'm not. I know there's no hat tonight because I, so I forgot to bring my beanie. I don't know if this is gonna work. Hang on. It's just gonna have to. Are we ever truly stable though? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a good question. My room is clean. This is clean. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let me just tr tr try for you guys. Okay. Let me pull up your guys' comments. Hello, Jackie. Corey. So I had a few things that I did want to bring up. Tara, I was looking at the Washington beanies when I was at the store and I'm probably going to send you an aww. If you send me a beanie, I will wear it on my live. I've gotten two beanies from you guys so far and I've, I've worn them. You guys have seen them because I've worn them on my live. Yes, that, that's extremely clean. Maru, thank you. I cleaned it for you guys, kind of. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Hi, Crystal. What's going on tonight? So tonight, what am I doing tonight? Just chilling tonight. Um, I had a few things I wanted to bring up before I get into your guys' questions, but hi from Michigan, Scarlett. Uh, hi, Amanda, watched episodes. How is Colleen's mom? Is she still in the cult? Maybe a quick update on her and your mom if you're comfortable doing that. If not, I understand. <laughs> Thank you. I think for like, um, Shirley, that's, Colleen and Chanel's mom. I think if we did a video on that, we would um, do it with them, you know, with uh, Colleen and Chanel. But like, I think it's pretty public that everyone knows Shirley did leave. So Shirley is out of the group, which is good. But I had a thing on my phone that I wanted to bring up. I was like screenshotting some of your guys' questions. Should we ask, did anyone go to church today? Hmm? By being busy painting. Hi, Mary. I've seen some of your paintings on your Instagram. They look really good. I've been painting a lot too because I've been making new mug designs, which is really fun. In the beginning, it was like kind of stressful because I didn't know I would like to sell out. But like, yeah, I'm drinking out of my Difficulty Teens mug right now. So all of the designs are my own. 
It says culty cup of coffee. This is your Sunday church. And I was thinking about this the other day, how I'm like, kind of feels weird that we're like meeting up on a Sunday and it's like, it is kind of like church and I'm like talking to all of you. Like I'm, I don't know, it's like the closest thing I guess that I'll ever get to feeling like Paul Kingston. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Got a cup of soothing my bronchitis. I had bronchitis when I was like 13, so I feel you. I was like, I don't know how bad yours is or if it's worse than mine was, but I had it like for a full week. Um, I was like shivering, but I was sweating for a full week and everything I ate, I would throw up. So I like lost like 10 pounds because I was sick to, de to death. <laughs> but yeah, I feel you. Sorry about that. That's when I realized I was allergic to penicillin too because that's what the doctor prescribed me and then I broke out in hives. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. You're our own leader, but the difference is you're a good leader. <laughs> Thanks, Tara. <laughs> that makes me feel a little better. Where's my a screenshot? I had a little question that I wanted to just brush up on. Okay, so someone from my, it was like two episodes ago, they said, if the kids do all the housework, raising their siblings, meal preparation, etc., what do the wives have to do? What responsibilities gets assigned to them? I feel like the cult likes to keep hands busy so people can't even think long enough to realize that something is off. I've had that same thought um, when I left. I was like, had a lot more free time. And I was able to like think and be more creative and have more ideas and, and like put my time into things that I actually enjoyed and made me realize. And I had, I had talked to a lot of ex-cult members about the same topic, how they keep you so busy that you don't even have time to think about the situation that you're in because you're, you're so busy in survival mode thinking about, you know, what, like raising the kids and um, making sure that you can pay your rent on time and all that stuff. So you can't even think about the emotional side of things like, am I happy in my marriage or am I happy in, the, in this abuse, you know? So that's a really good point. Um, as far as like the jobs, th so usually the oldest kids in these families get assigned most of the like work <laughs> to help raise the rest of the kids. So I was the second oldest in my family of 10 and me and my older sister Cammie were like raising the rest of the kids. Not that we did like everything, like our mom did cook a lot of the meals and stuff like that, but she also, our mom was expected to have a full-time job and pay a certain amount every month, right? So. We were just expected to help out as much as possible. And so I did help make a lot of dinners. I, I helped pick up the kids, you know, to and from school. Um, I helped get them ready for school, but I, I the, the moms do have like a lot of responsibilities on top. It's just like when they have kids old enough to help take care of the rest, they will have the kids help take care. Cause can you imagine taking care of 10 kids, right? So like back when I was like, getting my siblings ready for school, taking them in and like feeding them and like basically being their moms. My mom was still raising the younger ones. There were still younger ones that were home with her. So it was kind of like halfsies, you know, you're just helping out. That was a good question though, because it's like, yeah. My question is what does the men do? <laughs> just kidding. But um, I feel like I kind of covered that a little bit on my like the expectations of the wives video, but what does this say? Does anyone have Amanda's address? She doesn't she have a PO box? I do have a PO box on my um, Instagram. So if you go to my Instagram, I'll show you on my phone. If you want to send me, if, if everyone who sends me a letter, I send letters back. So if you want my PO box, I have this post on my Instagram. I used to have it in my bio, but I have my link to my Just Cold Eating mug now. Thank you, Anthony. Hello. Thank you for the donation. He was here last week. I feel like a lot of you come back every like I, it's like it really is kind of like church. I see the same the same members every week. Um, but this post, if you go to my Instagram, there's this post where I'm opening letters from you guys, and you go down to uh, the description. It shows my PO box right there. P.O. Box 571063, Salt Lake City, Utah, 84157. Thank you, Anthony. You're so sweet. But uh, yeah, it's, it's there publicly. I can put it on my bio if it helps it. Because I've had a lot of people message me too, like how they can send me a letter in the mail. And I thought I made it pretty public. It's also on most of my 
YouTube videos in the description box. I'll double check on that. But if it's not on all of them, it's on some of them, I'll make sure that I update it and make sure that it's on all of them. When will you be making the video of the order website? Okay, so that one hasn't been filmed yet, but I'm, I'm making my notes on that one. There's, there's The next video that's coming up is someone who left the order back. Should I just tell you guys who it is? Remember I did the video of Christy Tucker's story and how Christy Tucker was trying to leave the order and like they wouldn't give her her money. Um, if you haven't seen that video, it's called uh, A Message to the Order Members. So I basically tell Christy Tucker's story back in the day because Christy's husband grew up with Paul and knew a lot about him. So this video that I'm working on now is, well, it's already filmed. I'm just editing it. It's with Christy Tucker's daughter and like her, she has a, an, an awesome story. So you guys are going to see that next. I'm still working on putting the notes together for the order website because I don't want to miss anything. So I'm still putting everything together, but it, I'll let you know when I'm starting to film that one. That's a very, that would be a really interesting one, huh? Have you guys looked at that website? I still can't get over the fact that the the order, like the cult that I came from, decided to make a website about the cult, like making it sound like it. Anyways, we'll get into that in in a video, probably the video after Emily Tucker, or that's the that's Christy Tucker's daughter's name. The video after that one will be <clears throat> diving into that website, because that's. I mean, I didn't even know about that website until one of you guys sent it to me. Did you know that? I had no idea. I would love if you did another video with Colleen and Priscilla. I rewatched those yesterday after finding out about Dr. Chris. Yeah, I would love that too. It's just like hard to get like everyone in the same area at the same time, you know? And especially like doing an update on that would be awesome because it's like, yeah, they've all changed over the years, right? Like we've all changed a lot over the years. I don't have Instagram, I'll have to sign up. Oh, dang, okay. I'll make sure that the PO box is put in the description box then in all of my YouTube videos. I'll read it out again for anyone. I, I guess I didn't think about that, that people don't have Instagram. Um, PO box is 571063, Salt Lake City, Utah, zip code 84157. But I'll, I'll once, once this video goes up, I'll put it in my description box down below so that it's easier for you guys. Sorry, I didn't even think about that. Oh, that's why I like doing these weekly lives. I can I can communicate with you guys and see what I can do better. Definitely look forward to this every week. Oh, thanks, Courtney. I'm so glad. I do too. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I gotta like plan for this. And sometimes I I get like nervous about it. But every time, like after the lives, I feel really good about it. I feel like we've bonded. Leah, thank you. What? Leah Kelly, thank you so much for your donation. Where where is it at? You shouldn't even say anything. She just sent. Oh, thank you. I'll probably use that to buy me some coffee today. <laughs> Is Chrissy Tucker related to Priscilla Tucker? So someone asked that in the last video, and I was like, I wonder if they are related. So I asked Priscilla. I was like, hey, are you related to Christy Tucker by chance? But Priscilla's last name is... Um, so you know how like, it's kind of confusing because a lot of the women that are not the first wives, they have a fake last name. So I think that's what happened is Priscilla's grandma, her Priscilla's grandma married the leader and then she was like a plural wife. So she had to change her name to Tucker. I feel like I need to message her to make sure I'm saying that right. But I, I know that they are related, like Emily Tucker and Chrissy Tucker. Uh, Priscilla Tucker all related but I don't know that it's the Tucker because I'm pretty sure Priscilla Priscilla Tucker is not her like real name if that makes sense it's so confusing that website is just insane I know hi Naomi how many members are in the order so it's hard to like gauge exactly how many but I've done the math with other ex-members and like trying to like pinpoint how many kids are being born every year and like because because you think of like Paul has 27 wives and how many kids does he have with those 27? Wow, we got another donation. <laughs> Thank you. Um... So, where was I going with my train of thought? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Um, anyways, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to school right now. I'm taking a break. Yeah, that's right, Stacy. Um, would you come to Brooklyn, New York, and speak at my school? Uh, that's a long ways away. I do like New York. That would be cool. I am doing a. Oh, thanks, Mary. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Paul alone has over 300 kids. And then Daniel has 14 wives. And amongst the math that I did with Daniel's kids, we were counting them out. And he has at least 200 to 250. Um, so think about it that way. So Paul has, there's like the seven big, the seven brothers who are the seven like main like controllers of the order. They all have multiple wives and over hundreds of kids. So that right there is like over thousands of members, right? Just with Paul, his brothers, and all of their kids. And then you think about, you know, going down the chain of command. My dad, three wives. So smaller, modest family of three wives. First wife has 15 kids. My mom has 10 kids. Third wife has like over, I don't know the exact number. I think it's over like six or seven now. But like that's an average family size. And then multiple, multiple, like we were talking about this in one of my other videos, how they're having weddings every week weddings every like they were having triple weddings like three three women got married to three different men on the same day because their people are getting married so fast and so young and then they're expected to have a baby every year so last time i tried to do the math with someone and maybe there's someone in the order in the chats i haven't seen anyone in the order in the chats right now but when i did the math with someone who left they were saying ten thousand or more members and we were talking about too, like based off of the numbers that were given out, the numbers now, like the numbered men, there's over 200 of them. So there has to be at least 10,000 members. So they're growing really fast though, but not by like bringing any members in, just by like procreating so fast. So, uh, Meg says, I love that episode when Shirley had a funny name for Daniel on her phone. Do you guys remember that episode? I was shocked too because I watched that episode like what you can look at when Daniel calls Shirley and it's like a picture of a toilet <laughs> If you haven't watched it go watch it. It's funny. It's on YouTube now. You can watch like all the episodes <clears throat> Not really half siblings marry each other and have kids. Yeah, so that's something that is like shocking because People think that they don't still marry, have siblings, and have kids, but that's not. They definitely do. Um, my own dad has been doing that. But, like, there's been younger ones that have been doing it. There were When I was still in there, there was a wedding for two of Daniel's kids marrying each other. Hi from Virginia. I can't imagine sharing your husband. I know. But, like, they're expected to do that in the name of the Lord, right? That's why I have such a big problem with this. Someone was asking this on my... Um, I don't know where they asked. I think it was on YouTube. They were saying, okay, so you don't like religious polygamy, but what about like if people chose to live polygamy by freedom of choice, they just wanted to. And I thought about it, I was like, okay, but who would want to do that? Like, I don't know anyone who's, who's wanted to be like loyal to one person and have them like, you know, marry multiple people. And it's not in the name of religion. Because if you think about it, the only reason they can get these people in the order to live polygamy is by promising them eternal life, right? That picture may have been my fault. Hey, okay, do you guys remember? You guys might not recognize. Can I call you out, Val? <laughs> um, actually, maybe I won't call him. Wait, I'll, I'll wait till he responds, actually. Because I want to explain who he is. Um, yeah, it's so true, Leah. I am so appalled at the many different abuses, both girls and boys. Yeah, it's true. And it's like every single type of abuse you can think of, they use it to control and manipulate their followers. And when I left the order, I always thought that like, no one's ever gonna understand this type of, this type of religion, cause it's so crazy. But then you get out here and it's like, there's a lot of things that are similar. Like there's a lot of um, different religions that do the same types of thing, not the exact same types of things, but like, then there's also like the mafia is very similar to how the order was ran. Okay, yep. Okay, uh, Val says I can call him out. So Val is Gerald. If you guys watched my video, I had two videos with, um, I wonder if I could just show you on here. You guys wanted me to do an interview with him. I'll just show you the videos that we had. It was last year. 
We never did an interview with him though. If you guys remember this video that I did with Colleen and Gerald. That's Gerald right there, he's in the chat right now. But um, we talked about interviewing him and he had agreed, but like it's been hard because we don't have the same sm schedule matching up. But it would be really interesting to hear his side of the story being um, like he worked for the school at the time and he was, yeah. I mean, I guess I'll let him tell his story if he wants to <laughs> when we decide to ever film that. Um, I'm curious about what the first cult was other than Christianity, but I mean the extreme ones, yeah. So many. Who is up for marriage next from your immediate siblings? What do you mean? Oh, like in my family? So I talked about this in a video already, like two of my brothers got married. <clears throat> so there would be my, the next brother in line, I guess, to be getting married. <sighs> they have cops on their side, yeah. I talked about that story about how that guy got pulled over. Did I tell you guys that story? He gets pulled over, he was not even a member, he had left the order, but he gets pulled over and he was like drunk driving and he had his kid in the back seat of the car and um, the police officer pulled him over and as soon as they found out what his last name was, because his last name was Kingston, then the police officer just let him go because it was a police officer in the area where the cult was at. And at the time too, there was a lot of, I mean, there's no proof to say that they were taking bribes, but I mean, it's pretty obvious when you see like that the court cases or like um, certain abuses were filed, but never, nothing ever happened. Nothing like, and you hear the story of, um, I don't know if you guys watched the episode on Escape Completely Me, Little Sister, where there was one of Daniel's girls that was being abused so much that she had called the police and, she, and there was a report made. There was uh, proof that she had bruises all over her and she had proof that it was her uh, father that was doing it. And what had and because he was Daniel Kingston, he was the leader's brother, he was a higher up. I don't know, It. they just sent her back home. They didn't do anything about it. And sadly, the ending of that story is like really sad and I don't know if I, can bring it up on here, but if you want to look into it, you can watch that episode of Escape from Me. It's called Little Sister. <sighs> I guess the order's control is a lot stronger than I thought. Yeah, I, I get one of the most common things that I see on my like comments on my YouTube is like, how is the order still functioning? Like, how are they not? How are they getting away with this? And that's why. Like, when you have a lot of power, a lot of money, like you can get away with anything. I remember on Escape and Play Me when Daniel called the cops on Colleen and her sister and he told the cops he was Daniel Kingston. Yeah, see, why would he care to tell the police his name? A lot of people would be like trying to disassociate, like, especially me. My mom always taught us to not, to pretend that we weren't a part of the order to like protect the order, but the higher ups are like, oh, I am Mr. Kingston, right? So that they can get away with this stuff. Yeah. Allison's here. Speaking of Daniel, it's Allison's daughter. I mean, Daniel's daughter, Allison. Um, but yeah, that's a really good point. Why would he call the police and say, hi, I'm so-and-so Kingston? It's because he felt like that would help him in his case. Calling the police on his own kids that were living in a home that was their home. That w Anyways, <sighs> I don't want to get too heated. <laughs> Exactly, they own the cops, but what about the F, the feds? That's a good point too. I don't know how high up they go, but we do know that like some people have gone to prison and served time for the leader and his brothers, like like taking the blame so that the leaders and the brothers never go to prison. David did go to prison because there was no no way he could get out of that because the person that was his victim was fighting him in court. And um, so David is a big one that did go to prison. Daniel went to jail and like for abuse, but like got out on like work release and it was like a slap on the wrist. And, and even my, the guy that attacked me, Paul's brother, when I left, if you wanna hear more about that story, I have it on my, I don't know what I call it, but it's, it's uh, maybe I'll link it down below. 
uh, but I, I basically tell the story about how uh, Paul's brother attacks me, right? Um, two years later, he tries to get it expunged from his record. I didn't even know you could get abusing a minor expunged from your record permanently. It was only two years later. <sighs> anyway, they have lawyers, they have people like working on their, like, it's ridiculous. That's why I feel like you have to keep talking about it because if you don't talk about it, then people don't know that's happening. People, for the longest time, people didn't even know about the Kingston group and they were just breaking laws under the radar. But, um, and, and it's also because the, a lot of the followers didn't know a lot of the laws too. Like we were breaking laws without knowing we were breaking laws um, just because we were told to do it, you know? And then, um, I was going somewhere with that chain train of thought. <sighs> there was something I wanted to do a video on was the back accounts, but it's like so confusing. It gets like super confusing trying to talk about the back accounts and the bank accounts. We talked about this previously in another live, how they, in the order we all have a bank that all of our money goes into, right? And then um, at the end of the year, you're, you're a certain amount goes into this back account and you never see it again, depending on if you're like Paul and his brothers or someone higher up. But... What would happen to the wives of like Daniel and Paul if the men passed away and these wives can still produce children? So that has happened where a woman, um, multiple times where their husband did pass away and they were like, not, didn't go through like menopause yet. They still could produce more children for the work of the Lord. So um, they would basically assign her to another man and, or, and like get direction or say that she needs to get direction to, uh, bring more of God's children to the kingdom of God. So they usually get reassigned kind of like we talked about this in the live on Instagram with Colleen and Chanel, but what's that guy's name that passed away? <sighs> Let me see. You guys know who I'm talking about? He was a polygamist who, um, famous polygamist. That's why we can say his name, Tom Green. So Tom Green was like famous for polygamy and, um, I didn't really even know much about him until he joined the order, but he jo joined the order like a year or two ago. And then he ended up um, passing away last year of COVID. That's what I had heard. It was of COVID. And his wives ended up marrying, I think it was like one of Daniel's kids, Daniel's sons, like the same year they all got married. So Tom Green. Yeah. Yep. I haven't seen any videos on Tom Green. If anyone wants to like DM me interesting videos on him, cause I like literally had heard about him like right before he passed away. I didn't even know like what the big idea was with him. But yeah, what I had heard is he joined, he like gave all his money to the order, like dedicated everything to them. And then as soon as he died, they took his wives. So it's just so interesting, right? Yeah, he died of COVID and two of his wives married Daniel's son. Yeah, okay. Two of his wives. How many wives did he have? I don't even know. Amanda, I'll send you a video on Instagram. Yes, do it. I would totally watch that. <laughs> what would happen if you walked into the church right out? Right now, me, if I walked into the church right now, I would probably get escorted off the property. <laughs> um, I heard though that, so they have these Halloween dances and everyone like dresses up every year on Halloween in like these spooky outfits. And I heard that that's when like ex-members will like go back in and try to like talk to people is like they put their masks on and like dress up and, and like some of them would wear stilts so you couldn't tell by like the way they were walking. But it was like their way of going back in and like being able to see their family again. I know that sounds weird and creepy, but it's kind of genius if you think about it. Like you're not allowed to see your family, right? Ever again, you're dead to them because you left you just want to see them again you just go to the halloween dance put a mask on and pretend that you're a member again i don't know if they still do that but i had heard multiple ex-members had done that because that was like the only way that they could go see their family again i've seen a bunch of tom green documentaries on youtube i think he had four wives okay i heard that all of them married but maybe it's just the two that married daniel's kids <sighs> Autumn. Hi, Autumn. That's such a smart idea. It is. I almost was like, should I do that? <laughs> but I didn't want to get like beat up as soon as they found out who I was. 
They have guards outside of the church and they would stalk you and wouldn't let you in. Okay, they must have changed it because when I first left, there were not guards. And even when I left, there wasn't even the big black uh, gate. There's this huge gate now that like surrounds the cult so that even if you're like walking close to the property, like in. Um, but sometimes the gates open. I don't know. I don't like watch it all the time, but I didn't know they had bodyguards. What is it, like bouncers? <laughs> like if you can't, you're not allowed in the club. I know that when I was in, in the group, they would have like people who would walk around the uh, church just to make sure none of us were like ditching class or like no one, because we had a problem with people like slashing tires and everyone was saying it was outsiders doing it, but I'm pretty sure it was members doing it to each other because they were like jealous or mad or maybe like a wife was upset that um, some other girl was joining the family. I don't know. The gate Jessica watched when Eskel was escaping. Yeah, so the gate came up like after I had left. And sometimes I wonder, like, was it because of me? I don't know. But um, there was no gate when I was a member. And then it came up around the time that Eskel was like leaving or... Yeah, because I don't think the gate was up when Rachel left either. <clears throat> Stacy, that seems like a plot in a movie, the mask thing, yeah? It would be kind of an interesting movie head. Or even just interesting to try it out. But yeah, like they were saying, like, I guess now there are bodyguards, so it would be harder to get in. I feel like if someone wanted to, like, infiltrate and go in during Halloween, they would have to go in with a member that was trusted. Does that make sense? <sighs> Stay safe, Philly Bob. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that person is very smart about keeping their identity protected. And I think, mm -hmm. Infinity Lewis, save yourself, you have rights. Yep, you do have rights. It sucks that you have to do the research yourself just to find out your own rights, but that's why we continue to make these videos. I was thinking about making a video on emancipation because I remember trying to file for emancipation and like the process was, was like so scary and I had no idea what the rules were or like even the first step to emancipation. So I just decided that the easier route was just to wait till I was 18 and pray that like I didn't marry my cousin. <laughs> Would you do an interview with Billy Bob in the future? That Well, that's up to them. Definitely up to them. My my channel is mostly for like most of the people that I've done interviews with is people that have reached out and want to share their story. Um, I've definitely asked people if they'd be interested in it, but I never want to like pressure or push anyone to share anything that they're not comfortable with. Is the Kingston's only in Utah? So um, originally, yes, Utah. The, so the order started in 1935 and it was because like you know, you hear the whole Mormon, like Joseph Smith trekked across America to get to Utah and Brigham Young said, this is the place. Then it was first the Mormon church that was living polygamy. And then um, the order started in 1935, which we all branched from the Mormon church. But now because they're becoming bigger and they started having like farms and stuff like that, they do have members that um, are in Idaho. I think there's a few in Nevada, but like there's only like churches in Idaho and Utah that I know of. Maybe someone could correct me. I've been out for eight years. Um, so I don't know if there's like, if they've been expanding. It's not like the LDS church though, where they like have missionaries and have like temples everywhere and stuff like that. Cause no, um, but they do. Someone was telling me that the church gets a lot of like tax write-offs because it's under a religion, which that's like so conflicting to me because it's like, why should, this religion that is racist, abusive, all of these, you know. Thank you, Leah. Hmm. I didn't know you could send gifts on here. That's cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, why should they get a tax write-off if they're being racist, abusive to their kids? I mean, it, like, I don't know. I don't feel like they should get, I don't know. They've expanded to Pennsylvania. Why Pennsylvania? How do you know that, Allison? I know that some members have moved around the state to go to like school when the leader tells, tells them, oh, we need someone to go to school to be a doctor or someone to go to school to be a lawyer. Then they'll go, you know, but then they come back. But did they actually stay and like set up in Pennsylvania?
I believe the order believes in time, but not eternity when it comes to be, being remarried. I have heard that. I've heard that in the order that like when a woman is married to her first husband and if he dies and she gets remarried, she will be married to this new guy and have kids with him in this life. But when she dies, she will return to her original husband. I don't know where they got that from though, because then it's conflicting because they say like your family's eternal and what about the kids that are with this other guy? Is he, you know? I don't know why they came up with that or like where it came from. Pennsylvania has a lot of mountains. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, that's funny. Emily, I didn't get the notification. I know a lot of people are saying they're not getting notification. I don't know if you have to like turn it on. I don't even know how to turn on a notification on here to be honest, like click the bell. I don't know. That's why I try to like go on my Twitter and Instagram and tell you guys like an hour beforehand. As soon as I, I have like a more stable life, I will have a set time every Sunday that we meet and that we all know this is when it's, you know, but right now it's like just whenever I can <laughs> do it. But we've been going strong for six, six episodes, six Sundays. But, um, did Rachel Jeffs ever get in touch with her sister that was secluded in the woods? No, so I, um, you're talking about Teresa, right? So that's also on Escaping Polygamy. We went out to South Dakota because the FLDS has a compound out there. FLDS is separate from the Kingston group, by the way. A lot of people get them confused. FLDS is the, the ones who lived in Colorado City that followed Warren Jeffs and have the, the dresses that they wear. The Kingston's in the order of Salt Lake. We didn't wear the dresses. We did not follow Warren Jeffs, but we all believed in the same, like you have to love polygamy to get in the Celestial Kingdom and you know, all that. But um. She went out to South Dakota to try to find her sister, Teresa, and she did see her. She, from what I had had heard at the time, she hadn't gotten in contact with her, but she knew that she was out there. Um, but we think she might ha may have gotten moved somewhere else. You'll have to ask her. She does have an Instagram, Rachel Jeffs does. And she has, she like, she's pretty like, she updates it pretty often. Click the bell and it should ask you what you want to be notified. And then I believe you press OK and you have to have YouTube notifications enabled on your phone or whatever device you use. OK, so so it is possible to have a notification. Read what Autumn just said. <laughs> Click the bell and then it'll ask you. OK, cool. So it is the bell. I have never done that. I'm going to try it now. Russ. Your coffee mug looks like, in your picture, looks like a culty cup of coffee. D is it? It looks just like my mug. Did you buy one? There's more in stock. There's only like 10 left. I will leave the link down below if you guys want them. I, I love these mugs. <laughs> Every single one has a different design on it. Every single one. So there's no two alike. Someone said, what did they say? It was like conventional art and I liked, I think I'm gonna put that on my website because I like, I like that wording. <sighs> Amanda, will you be doing more of the Escape from Polygamy show? That was such a good show. Um, it really just depends on like contracts and stuff like that. I think that there's a lot of reasons why it stopped. It was it was pretty hard to document like escapes like that and to, to get people willing to document. So, and I think that when COVID happened too, like, I don't know, there's a lot of reasons why it just didn't. But I would love for it to start back up again. And as soon as I know, you guys will know too, if we're gonna start up again. Someone sent me a video. Maybe I don't wanna clarify. I don't wanna like give this person hate or anything, so I'm not gonna say who it was that said this, but I'm sure some of you know who it is that I'm talking about. Another YouTuber was claiming that Escaping Polygamy was all fake, all reenacted, and I've heard a few people say that and it makes me so upset because the people that say that are people that have never been involved with with the order or with the show or even like like where are they getting that information? I think that some people just want to believe it's fake because they don't want to wrap their brain around the fact that this is happening in America. Thank you, Lulu. I have, I like that name. I know someone named that, related to them. Oh, my time with Olivia. Um, Olivia just started a YouTube channel and I, I, I subscribe. I love her videos. So everyone go follow, subscribe to her. She's got 
She's a star. She just started up, but I really, I loved, I watched your whole video and I loved it. I commented on it too. Um, where was, what, I just got distracted. Um, yeah, so, so everything that I was a part of on the whole show, like, I don't understand how you could fake an escape, like, that with Rachel and Esco's escape, that was my family's house. With Priscilla's escape, that was her grandma's house. How do you, like, fake an escape on the property of the, you know? So, it really, like, bothers me when people say that. <laughs> but, yeah, I hope that that YouTuber, it's weird because I've talked to that YouTuber before, and then they made a video saying that it's all fake which is like maybe they just do it because they get attention from it I don't know but it 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 upset me mostly because I respected that youtuber a lot when then when she has like no proof anyway and it's like it feels like they're discrediting me and everything that I've gone through and discrediting Rachel and Eskel and Marianne and Priscilla and all of these people who have escaped and came from this traumatic lifestyle and decided to document it and go through all of these hardships just to show and expose this stuff and then to have someone like completely discredit it and say that it's all fake it's really upsetting so i'm not mad at this person there's probably a bunch of reasons why they would say those things but i i am allowed to say my side and that it is definitely not fake <sighs> There are literally people on YouTube calling Rome fake. It's because it's something to talk about. I don't think they really believe it. It's just, an, maybe, maybe you're right, Stacey. <laughs> um, how is Marianne? She left the FLDS, right? Yeah, um, I saw her like a week ago. Yeah, we hung out. Um, she is awesome. She's still doing her like Minky Dreams blankets. If you guys are interested in buying one of those, she is so good at sewing. I said this before, like a lot of FLDS girls are like so talented with sewing. But um, yeah, she sells these amazing blankets. I wish I had one to show you right now, but she's doing really good. She's got, she's going to school right now. So good for her. Is Priscilla quitting YouTube? I don't know, you should ask her. I've, I've, I think she did really good on YouTube. So I would love to see more videos from her. Did you guys find out who the insider was and did they finally get out? Um, that I get that question so much. I got that one uh, on my Instagram too, just the other day. And uh, from what I know that the insider is still in the group. So no one wants to talk about who it is because we don't want to get them in trouble. Especially because, you know, if you're in the group, you ha they have a lot of control over you. So we don't want to like expose them, but hopefully they will get out. Are you still helping with escapes? Um, that's another question I get a lot, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, they're my family, so a lot of them will reach out to me and I'll, it, it, I mean, it goes, it depends on what they need. A lot of the times they just wanna know their options, so I'll give them their, their what what options they have. I'll, I'll get, usually give Holding Out Help's information because Holding Out Help is the charity that helped me when I left the cult. Um, and then there has been times where I've helped them find a place to stay or met up with them to, tell them basically what their rights are because <laughs> I brought this up in another video where the girls were like saying that they couldn't leave and I was like why can't you leave and they're like well I have kids and they said that if I try to leave then my husband will get the rights to my kids and I was like where where are they getting that information that's not true they can't just have your kids if you leave the cult but a lot of these women's a lot of these women believe in in these fake laws, I guess, that they're that the men in the order are telling them that are true because where else are they gonna get the information? They are not allowed to talk to outsiders, you know? <sighs> so, Amanda, how did you get into painting? I recently started and I love it. Oh, I'm glad that you do, that's awesome. Um, I got into painting a few years back. It was kind of like just um, a pastime, but I was not good. I, I I know I'm better than I was, but I definitely want to take a painting class. That's cool that you like it, though. It's fun, huh? Um, I kind of started with Amanda. I don't know if you guys have seen the other Amanda, but she is a really good artist. And so she kind of got me into painting with her when we lived together. So was the other insider who was out... I saw some YouTube videos about it. What do you mean, Autumn? 
the other insider who was out. I don't know. I think you should document all of your expenses with the escape experiences with the escape so that when it comes back you can show it. I I have talked to people who have recently left about like if they would want to share their experiences and their stories and I always just feel so like I don't want to pressure them to because they're already going through so much and sometimes like especially order members when they leave they're like so nice and like so e eager to please because that's how order members are raised to be and I don't ever want to like push them to share at that vulnerable time of their life you know so my channel is more about like people who've been out for a while and are emotionally stable and ready to talk about it thank you sandy how are you guys doing these gifts those are so cool cool there's a few videos on an insider who escaped i can send you the videos yeah send me the videos because i don't know what you're referencing Brittany says, do you watch Sister Wives? If if you do, how do you feel about the new season? Is there a new season? Someone was telling me it was getting canceled because like they're not even living polygamy anymore. Like he chose he like picked a favorite wife. Am I wrong? I don't like following their story because like episode one they lied and said that they were not affiliated with any polygamous group and they in fact are affiliated with the AUB polygamous group in Utah. So I don't follow them. But I'm basically my information of, of like Cody Brown and his wives comes from you guys telling me because <laughs> I don't want to watch it. It like makes me want to throw up. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sure they're like good people, but I just don't like that um, they lie so much and, and, and they kind of act like it's like a choice thing and it wasn't like, you know. But yeah, I didn't know there was a new season. I thought it was getting canceled because they're not like married anymore. It's funny because in the order that was like one show that my dad like would watch and I think he just liked it because he liked seeing like other polygamists. Everyone's starting to hype up Billy Bob's escape. <laughs> yeah I mean there's so many options now for like members who want to leave. Back when I left like it was, it was not very many options. Have you watched Seeking Sister? Ooh. No, I'm gonna Google that right now though. That sounds sounds familiar for some reason. I remember that show. Have you guys heard of was it like My Five Wives? It like only aired for one year. It was around the time that Escape and Me first came out. It only aired for like one year because they had had filmed with the family for a while and then they like discovered that I don't know if it was the dad or the brother or someone in the in the family was like being a sexual predator. So then they like canceled the show. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Seeking a sister. Is this religion based? Four families, all in various phases of seeking or dating and transitioning the new sister wife of their life in their lives. I don't want to watch this, but if you guys want to tell me, is it a religious based show? <laughs> <clears throat> Let's stop with the triggering stuff, guys. She doesn't need to keep looking at this crap. She lived it. <laughs> it's it's kind of true. Um, I when I first left, then people would ask like those questions all the time. Like, do you what do you think about Sister Rise? What do you think about all these shows? But like, the they're it's just like what I came from, and so that's why I don't want to watch it because it's like I already know what it's like. I already been there, done that, and yeah, I never lived polygamy, but I watched it happen over and over and over to the people that I love, the people that I cared about. And yes, you've seen it in super cringy. Okay. Not religious based. So I guess now I'm curious if it's a polygamy that's not religious based, are the women allowed to date other men or is it just the men allowed to date other women and the women have to be faithful? Here in Minnesota, if the wives were not legally married to the, what did you say? If the wives are not legally married to the husband and they have kids, the wives have automatic full custody of the children. The guy can take the woman to court. But yeah, so in Utah too, if the woman has kids, like they, they usually favor the women in Utah. So when they, when these members are like, oh, they're going to take, the boys are going to, the man is going to take my kids away. That's not true. But the men, the men in the order tell the women this so that the women feels trapped and have to stay in order to be with their kids. You know, it's not true. Maddie, hi. 
Hmm. Some of the couples in that show are religious based. See, yeah, that makes sense. And here's the thing too, like with Cody Brown and his family and, and um, what's his show called? I just went, I can't remember. Sister Wives? Yeah. He lied and said that it wasn't religious based either. And it is. And I saw his family at the AUB church. So like, there's no way that he could say that he's not affiliated. Amanda, what's your favorite flower? <laughs> Uh, probably tulips or white rose. Because when my grandpa died, there was a lot of white roses at his funeral. And so I like white roses and tulips because my mom, when we were kids, she like grew these purple tulips out in front of the house. Back when we lived in this like tiny little two bedroom apartment, my mom had five kids <laughs> and she was like 24. <laughs> Amanda, are you enjoying the regular lives? I really do. I like being able to connect with you guys and talk about like um, like where you guys are from and what you guys have been doing. Like, And I like when you guys, I feel like these conversations we have weekly kind of help me to improve on my other videos too and my content and I can pull up things that you guys are actually interested in. And I like asking you, like, would you guys be interested in seeing a video like this? And I just feel like it's better to just be able to communicate and have more of a community with you guys. And I, I, I think I've said this in multiple lives. I lost my community in the order, right? Like overnight. And I was searching for a community for years. <laughs> I went to churches too, just to find it. Like I went to Presbyterian churches. I went to Lutheran churches. Wanted some type of like, I was trying to fill this void. But I feel like I kind of get that with you guys because it's like a community. <laughs> and we all are here like every week to discuss whatever we want, I guess. Uh, what do you do for work now? This. <laughs> right now, it's this. Um, I have a few things on the side, but yeah, this is the first time that I haven't been like nine to five, you know, but yeah, I am planning on going back to school, hopefully, but I'm taking a break right now. I was going to school for um, dental, <laughs> but yeah. Can we see your painting that's in the background? Um, so I change these every week. This one's not very good because I tried to do like a fire effect. <laughs> you can tell. Um, but yeah, I change them every week for the Sunday sit down. This is episode six. Um, I tried to do like burn look, but it just looks like it was like thrown in the trash and then I picked it out of the trash can. But yeah, every week I do like a different design for you guys. I mean, it helps me to like, be more creative and practice more because I do the um, mystery art. And my mystery art is the the art that I make for Holding Out Help. So 70% of the profits from my mystery art goes to Holding Out Help. I wonder if I have a picture of my mystery art that I can show you guys. Let's see. Well, this is one that sold. And if you guys bought a mug, then you may have had your mug have some of this art on there because on all the mugs I have like a sneak peek of what like the mystery art that I'm working on like this is the one that just sold mystery art but yeah I'm glad you guys like my art I like never thought that so I originally started doing the artwork because it was like my the day I left the order was July 25th of 2013 so every year when I started my YouTube, I decided to do an auction, an art auction where I would match the profits. And I do this every year still in July, match the profits for my art auction and all the money would go to holding out help. And then um, you guys kept asking when the next one was. And I was like, well, I only do them in July because I can't keep like matching the, the sale amount because I don't go broke. <laughs> but then um, I just decided to continue painting the trees and do like 70% of the profit will go to holding out help. I'm really glad you guys like them though. Like all of my art has sold. And I think like part of it is because, you know, the cause, like 70% of it goes towards holding out help. <sighs> How was your relationship with people of color changed since leaving the order like on the worthiness? Um, I feel like because I went to public school for two years, I, kind of got more normal experience with people who were not white, you know? 
Um, I feel like if I would have only went to the private school in the order and only done homeschool, I would have had a, more of a shock when I left, but I was able to go to public school for two years. And yeah, in Utah at the time, there was a lot, like like 90% of the population was white. So it wasn't like the biggest uh, culture, but I was friends with people who were not white. I even, I told this story on my, uh, one of my videos that one of my first outside friends, she was African-American. <laughs> And I tried to bring her home to hang out with me and I got in so much trouble for it just because like my dad literally I remember exactly what my dad said he said not only did you have to bring an outsider home but you had to bring this is his words a black one <sighs> yeah so I remember like not understanding why though like I remember being like I don't understand why she can't come here like she's she was the only one that was like nice to me in school <laughs> like now I can't have her as a friend because she's not right but um, yeah, so it wasn't as much of a shock to be around people that weren't white because I was able to experience it a little bit in younger years. Um, but for a lot of order members, they don't get to experience that. And I remember even being in the private order school, they like would say the N-word, they'd call me the N-word because my skin was a little darker than like the white ones, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I am grateful for that though. Cause can you imagine if like, I was, there was already so many things that freaked me out on being on the outside like that on top of it would just be like <laughs> anyway but yeah racism is a big thing in the order like some of them will say no we're not racist but it's like just look at the the school that's trying to get the public funds so they, they get millions in public funds yet they only let white order members be a part of it because they don't want their order members to associate with it's it's all like religion based too they, they believe fully that people who are not white and especially if you're not in the order you're not going to make a celestial kingdom and then especially if you're not white you don't even get a chance to get into any because they believe in the three degrees of heaven celestial celestial and terrestrial but yeah those are only for white people apparently <laughs> did you guys know that anyways what kind of churches do you guys go to <laughs> Uh, what religions are you? Did you guys go to church? Where are you guys from? Let's talk about you guys now. While I sit down. Where's my coffee? We love holding a hope. But you should keep some more of the profits of your art for yourself. This is your job and we want to support you too. Oh, thank you, Maddie. That's actually why I decided um, to do my mugs. Because I was like, the artwork has always been something that was for holding out help. And I feel bad profiting. So I was like, well, 70% will was a good number. Because then most of it's going to holding out help. And then I get a little bit for my like time and, you know. But these... I get to keep the money <laughs> and like I, I like this as a side thing too because it's like I get to continue practicing on making my art pieces better but <sighs> oh thank you Leah Margaret Margareta is an ex epic episcopal atheist but believes everyone is in on their journey and respects that. I'm gonna Google that. That is, I've never heard of that. <laughs> I, I agree though. I, I, I respect that everyone's on their own journey. I respect that, but uh, the only thing that I won't respect is if like, cause I, I say I respect all religions, but I say that with um, assuming that they're not, you know, abusing, um, hurting anyone, right? Like that, that everyone has rights. Equal rights. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, Flicker Fade. Yes, I agree with Maddie. Oh, you guys are so sweet. I was never right. Thank you, Jenny. I love that emoji. Emoji gif. I was never raised religious, and I think it's too much pressure. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like 80% of religions now, there's like, there's always one person that's in control and one person that everyone like looks up to as if they're a god. And I don't like that. I like, I, I would rather, um, and I'm sure there's churches out there that believe in this, but like 
believing that everyone has equal connection to, to whatever they want to believe, God, spirituality, um, I don't know, whatever you want to believe. <laughs> as long as it's like good and healthy and it's like, like the communities I feel like should help each other out and not like have like ranking systems, you know? I grew up in the order church. Are you out of the order? <laughs> Thank you, Flicker Fade. As long as they aren't infringing on other people's rights, they are valid. Really, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I support whatever religion you want to be in, as long as exactly you you took the words out of my mouth. Not infringing on other people's rights. Everyone is equal. I'm a Christian, and I personally go to UCC Church. What is that? UCC. <laughs> um. Yeah, I know a lot of Christians, and I, I like the idea of like Christ's teachings. I don't have a problem with what he taught. I don't know like that everything in the Bible is true, but I think that his teachings were like turn the other cheek, treat others how you want to be treated. Like I agree with all of them, but I myself am not. I'm not defined by a religion. What is your favorite? MLK Jr. quote. I had a dream. <laughs> did I tell you guys that in the order we did not celebrate? Like, I didn't even know who MLK was. We did not celebrate. You know how, like, some schools, like, though they don't go to school. It's, like, it's considered a national holiday, so they, they don't go to school or work on those days or some some people get work off on those days we I never even knew MLK existed till I left and we went to school like like it was just a normal day because they'd never ever want to glorify someone who's not white yes Olivia has left girl Olivia is this her real name is was Olivia Labar is that your real name that's not your real name is it Cause I don't know a family that has that name I was brought up Catholic, but now believe in the universe and not God. Wow. How old were you when you made the switch? And like, that's interesting. I'm like fascinated with stories like this. Like what made you get, like where, how did your journey end up here? <laughs> how did you get there? <laughs> Protestant Christianity has the doctrine, doctrine, priesthood of believers. I don't know what that is. What you're talking about, everyone connects directly to God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, I like that. I don't like when people have to, like, confess to a bishop or confess to, like, um, like they have to go through an earthly person to have that kind of, you know? But maybe for some people, if it, it keeps them in check and it makes them feel like they're, I don't know. It's just, like, I didn't like it in the order of having someone on earth telling me that they know what God wants me to be doing. And it's like, how do you know, you know? And why is it that, that God wants me to give you money? <laughs> why is it always that? <sighs> you can look up what UCC means online. Let's see. UCC Christian Church. United Church of Christ. United Spirit and inspired by God's grace, we welcome all. Man, I am Protestant Christian denomination. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 4,852 churches, almost almost a million members. Huh. There's so many religions, you guys. It's kind of crazy. Lots of order members know about him now, but only because they make fun of him. Oh, MLK. Yeah. It's very common in the order for for them to like make like racist jokes and like any any like person that is not white that becomes famous that they like kind of kind of kind of they treat them like like us us outsiders who leave all of a sudden they like make fun of them and like um just talk mad crap <laughs> basically huh. I just got a text from Allison and she escaped she just explained who Olivia is okay that's cool Olivia you have a very good story wow Olivia if you ever want to tell your story about how you left I would totally be open to sharing it but no pressure no pressure 
Um, I'm a recovering Catholic. <laughs> I like I like the wording on that. Pagan witch now. So there was like a whole year of my life that I was like fascinated with the whole like paganism. Cause like to me, like how you guys think how the order is like so like different from anything that you've heard of paganism to me was like different than anything i'd heard of so i like researched the absolute hell out of them because i thought it was so fascinating olivia please let her interview you yeah no pressure and here's the thing like anyone i've said this multiple times on my channel anyone who i do an interview with i always edit the video and send it to them to make sure that they're okay with it before posting it and i have had times where i've had the person say hey can you cut this out or put this in or can we redo it and yeah, totally. Like, I'm never going to post something, like an interview especially, that's someone's personal story and, you know, not have their approval or have them feel like it wasn't the way that they wanted it to be said. So, yeah. I just wanted to let anyone who's watching who's ever interested in, in like, telling their story that that's how the process usually goes on my channel. And no pressure. No pressure at all. Also, Amanda, what do you think about the Amazon wish list that Courtney mentioned? Amazon wish list? What? Where? Am I missing something? Hmm. It's interesting to me how many different churches there are in the U.S. In Sweden, we have like the Swedish church. <laughs> wait, wait. Catholic Church and some others like Mormon and Pentecostal, but they're not big. It is interesting, but it's probably because you know how like, and like maybe I'm wrong, but like America started like freedom of religion. So maybe that's why like everyone was like starting their own religions when they got here. Plus, if you think about it, what's like the quickest way to make money? Probably to start a cult. <laughs> um, I gotta go soon. We've been on here for over an hour. Have we been on here for over an hour? Yeah. Wow, time flies. Um, they want you to make a wish list so we can send you stuff. Oh, no. I don't know why I feel so weird about that stuff because I feel like I get so much out of this. I don't want you guys to feel like you need to do more. And like, I, I, I don't know. You guys are so sweet. We think you should make an Amazon wish list of items you need for life, making art, etc., so we can buy them for you. Um, but that's the thing, like, I, with my mugs, like, I make the money off of these mugs because you guys are buying them, and then that money can go towards, you know, my art, so. <sighs> Why are you guys so nice? You know what's crazy? When I first left the, left the order, I was, like, convinced that, like, because they told me my whole life that, like, outsiders are very, like, selfish and worldly, and, like, the best people are all in the order. And order people, not all of them, not all of them, but some of them are very terrible people. <laughs> and I was treated like the worst in the order. And I was kind of expecting the outsiders, which is you guys, <laughs> us, I guess now, because I'm an outsider now, were going to be very, very, you know, unaccepting and rude. And so I lied a lot too about my, my like past because I didn't want people to know where I came from because I thought I would get shame for it. Because I was also taught that, that like outsiders wouldn't understand and that they would judge you and blah, blah, blah. But I've been out for eight years now and like you guys, have, some of you guys have been like treated me nicer than my own family, than my own people that I grew up in the order, my own community. So that's what I'm saying. Like I get so much out of this that I just, I don't know. I just really appreciate it. Since we're sharing our religions, I am Lutheran, Episcopalian. Twice now that word has come up. Episcopalian. I feel like I have to Google a word every time I go live with you guys. You guys are teaching me. The Episcopal. Am I saying that right? Church. Based in the United States. Um, it's a worldwide angelical communion. It is a mainline Protestant denomination. It is divided into nine provinces. Founded in 1789. Wow. It's been around for centuries. Headquarters in New York. Wow. So many churches. Wow. Okay. I gotta go soon, but I... <sighs> so...
Sarah. <laughs> you kind of did, huh? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> no one judges. No one cares. AA meeting. That's funny. I would love to see you start a savings for college for psychology degree. Yeah. I really, like, if I had all the money in the world, I would go for psychology. Because it's like an eight-year, right? Eight-year schooling and, like... But, oh my gosh, I, when I took my first psychology class, I was like, this is, like, it was so enlightening. And I think, I think a big part of it is because I was finally able to re realize why I was getting brainwashed or, like, what everything was, like, basically diagnose everything <laughs> that was happening while I was in the cult. <sighs> All right, I gotta go. Episcopalian. Oh, so I was saying it way wrong. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can you please do a video on emancipation? Okay. Yeah, I I had multiple people who have left the order say that that is a good idea to do just basically like step by step how to get emancipated in Utah. It would be mostly a video for uh, order members and maybe maybe some people in Utah could also it could be useful for people in abusive families, but um, I think that I'm going to work on that one in the next few months to put like step by step how to get emancipated in Utah because if if members knew that they had that option, how, I know so many of them would do it. If they knew how to do it, they would do it. Um, I mean, I would have, but I didn't know. And I remember printing out the like papers online and like not like looking at it and not even knowing what the words meant and like feeling so discouraged and just being like, I guess I'll just wait till I'm 18. And I ran away multiple times because I, I, like home life was really hard at the time. But Amanda started an Amazon wish list and put cameras, mics, at, aww. These are nice. Flicker fade. I feel like you're here every week. I feel like we sh I wish that we could all like, I know we're all in different states, so it's like not really like, possible but it would be cool to like actually like have this i feel like this group right here is like would be so cool to just hang out with you guys in real life because marianne been to las vegas yeah we were in vegas together at the um bellagio she posted a picture but yeah she she hadn't been till after she had left which is funny because the crick is like really close to vegas Emancipation video, yeah. I think that um, that the the problem is I still don't know the process of emancipation, so I need someone who's done it, who can take me through the steps, and maybe I'll like do a few videos with them so they can answer all the questions. So that because I know when I was leaving, I like I tried to plan it out as much as possible because it's like the scariest thing you ever do in your life. So you're you're thinking about every possible scenario that could go wrong. So I feel like if I did an emancipation video, it would have to be. Um, multiple so that we can make sure all the questions get covered maybe i would go live with the person because here's the, i don't know the process of emancipation so i really want either i would have to do the research myself or i would have to have someone who did it which there have been people from the order who have have successfully gotten emancipated and maybe i'll just have them do an interview with me and explain the process i think allison did get emancipated did M michelle Emancipation is super complicated and no two are alike. Yeah. Huh. Maybe I should just do a video with Michelle and Allison and we can go over like everything that happened in their cases. Andrea is a lawyer, but she's a lawyer in Washington. And I think that the, thank you, Caroline, Zoom groups and we can all see and talk to each other. <gasps> That's a cool idea. How many people can be in a Zoom group though? Because we have, how many people are on here right now? We have like 214 people. Can we have a Zoom call? It would just be everyone like talking and no one could hear each other. <laughs> Can't even hear yourself think. That would be fun though. Um, I gotta go. A lawyer come on and explain what to do. That, I know a lawyer in Utah that would probably be willing to do that. That's a really good idea. Okay, I think that the the next time that I can get in contact with this lawyer, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to them about that. And I mean, not all lawyers know everything about emancipation, but I feel like if they're a Utah lawyer and they have worked with order members, 
maybe I can, if they're not willing to like, like go on like my channel, maybe I can just like pick their brain and write down the key points. That's a really good idea. Okay, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I gotta go. But uh, this is a really good live. You guys always have really good questions, always. And um, thank you guys so much for joining me every week. I feel like it's been really nice. Um, anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, oh, I feel bad now because it looks like someone just got into the chat. <laughs> but all right. Um, I will see you guys next week. You'll be seeing a video this week with Emily Tucker telling her story. And then we will be coming out with the video on order, the Orders website. Um, as always, you can leave in the comments down below any new video ideas that you have for me. You can always DM me on Instagram. Uh, I try to read all my messages. But yeah, thank you guys for joining. And I will see you next week. Bye.